Yeah, dude, I want you to fly through that, that, that f***ing explosion. You do? He's 19 years old. You do? Yeah. Don't f*** up. Mr. Michael Bay. <laughs> Listen, uh, but I want to say a sincere thank you before we get started to Universal for renting this theater, to Mr. Bay for agreeing to do this Q&A. Just call me Bay or Mike or whatever. I will just say, <laughs> I, will, I will work that in, but I, a sincere thank you. I really appreciate this. Well, I, I, um, I got a lot of questions and then I'm gonna open it up to the audience. Um, and I'm just, so I read, and I obviously could be wrong, that you worked at, on Raiders of the Lost Ark at like, at when you were like 15, doing something. 15 and a half, uh, right, literally right outside the Universal, uh, the, the Black Glass Building, what, Earthquake, was that what the movie? Yeah, right yeah. yeah, it was in, it's the parking lot now where the uh, subway was. There was a little brick building. I was saving up for a, a car, a 240Z. It was a piece of shit. My parents took it to the mechanic. They said, don't buy it. Okay, the mechanic said, don't buy it. But literally, it was a summer job. And uh, I was filing like Yoda's house, a bog house. Uh, I was like, literally, I had a very mean librarian who was the head guy there, but I'm filing all the stuff. And um, uh, I, I, I was very good at baseball. I used to want to be a pro baseball player. And I was on the softball team, so I was short, shortstop. And then, Apparently I was good, and, and so they, uh, they gave me an office. And in that little office, I was walking by a, what do you call the in Star Wars 2, the walker? The walkers? The ad -ad. What do you call those things, the walkers? The, the ad -ad. The what? Okay, I don't even know that name, but whatever. <laughs> I, they, it, it was a cool model you walked by, because they, 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 the, they, they would do it like animation. And uh, I had this little office, and one day I started getting from London these gigantic uh, 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 storyboards from London, uh, uh, Spielberg's uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. And I remember seeing, you know, filing, blah, 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 blah. And I go to my 15 year old buddies and I said, Yeah, Spielberg's doing this movie called Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yeah, and I, I think it's going to suck. <laughs> okay, cut to, let me cut to. Um, uh, a year and a half later, I would go to the movies with my parents, like on Sundays, and I went to the Grauman Chinese Theater, and when I saw the movie, I'm like, oh my God, that's what I want to do. And cut to even later, I was like, th I think 24, I was doing, I started do directing videos when I was 22, and then started doing commercials, maybe 25, I don't know. And I get this call from this agent, he goes, you gotta meet, Sp you gotta meet Steven, it was Steven at 3.30, and I think it was about two o'clock when I got the call, and I'm like, Steven, who? Spielberg, be there. I'm like, oh my God, oh fuck, fuck. So, I was shy, all right, and I go to Amblin right here, and um, I, I'm like, it's tw he's 20 feet away, he's sitting at his desk, and I, I, I I'm like, oh my God, that's Steven Spielberg. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. What am I gonna say? And I sat down in the chair, and I'm like, hey, um, I followed your, your storyboards, and I really thought your movie was gonna suck. <laughs> he started cracking up, and uh, um, I said, I, and then when I saw your movie, it's, it's, I decided that's what I wanna do. So there you go. But anyway. that's, a great, that's a great story. Uh, I'm gonna skip I never away. bought the car, by the way, okay? I got a Scirocco instead. Uh, if someone has actually never seen any of your movies before, what is the first thing you want them watching? That's a good question. I mean, it's like a trick question, by the way. You know, he's very crafty. Um, the first thing, I think watching the performance and watching the vibe of the movie, the energy of the movie. Um, uh, you know, listen, my first movie, Bad Boys. Um, <laughs> But let me explain Bad Boys for a second, because it's, it's, we were three punk kids working in, in Miami, and the studio, Sony Pictures, did not believe in the movie, and um, I was very young, I, don't, I forgot how old I was, um, I'm still 32, so, but just <laughs> 90, okay, so you figure out the age, okay, and um, it's like they had no faith in the movie, and there were times when there was a line producer who was very mean to us. I mean, Will Smith was, was acting, and literally the lights would just shut off in the middle of a take because it was 12 hours. And 
Um, the crew, they were not allowing me to hire any of my crew, and they're like, that's not going to cut, that's not going to work, that's not going to work. And I'm like, well, let's just see, let's just see. And then I, I remember watching Cameron, who was a big hero of mine, watching uh, True Lies. And he had all this money, and what it, we had nine million bucks. But at least I had two guys that, and, and I was working for for my generation at that time. And I said we can make something funny, and um, we took a big risk. It's like Sony had no faith in the movie because two black stars never it never worked until then until that movie overseas. That's the first movie that broke the whole mold. And, um, you know, the thing is, when you're a director, your first time, if you fail, you're done. It's over. Um, so uh, it's, it, it's like there are moments, and I'll tell you like one moment. Um, we're driving to another location, and there was, there was very little money. The script was terrible, but I, I improv with the guys a lot. And... You know, I'm the type of person where I did a lot of Nike commercials, uh, and I worked with a lot of famous athletes from Jordan on down. And you know, when Will would do something, nah, that's not funny. That's not funny. I love funny. Okay, and uh, it, it's it's a there's a there's a, a, a thing where we're driving to another location, and I'm like, stop the band, stop the band, stop the band. And I saw this this sign, and I just saw the light, and um, I, I came up with this shot. I said, get the circle track, get the circle track. And my line producer comes out. You, what are you doing, Michael? You got, we can't, we, we're going to be late to the night. I said, this is going to be a trailer shot. I was like, come up with shots very fast. And I put the circle track, and I said, guys, I just want you to just bend down and rise up, and I'm going to come around you. <laughs> Boom, there we go, huh? <laughs> you know the shot. <laughs> You, you do that on a bunch of your movies, though, that when you're filming, you, I've heard, I think it even happened on Ambulance, where you're like, this is a trailer shot. Which one was that? I don't, Jake told me today, when I was doing an interview, he's like, we were filming this, and... and no, he thought it was a trailer. Jake thought he was getting a trailer shot. He didn't. He didn't. <laughs> <laughs> go, go, uh, going, uh, a few other no, things. No, but seriously, oh. the, the cast was amazing in this movie, and you never know what you get. You never know the vibe when you, when you put people together. Um, you know... I think Hollywood is like, there's less re rehearsal time, and we've had COVID, and so you have to basically meet over phone or Zoom, and, and my thing when you, when you work, work on a movie, the first week is the most important, and I, I, I like to do a little character building, I like to do a little action, a little fun, a little funny, and you give a vibe for the crew, you give a vibe for the actors, and, and what I like most about movies is it, it, movies take a life of their own, and the actors add more, the crew adds more, and it's a very collaborative uh, thing, and, um, and it, was, it was a great vibe with the actors, so. I have so many ambulance questions, but I still have a few other things that I really... I talk a lot, so I'm gonna try to limit his question. Right. <laughs> Uh, which of your films changed the most in the editing room versus what you were expecting, and why? Okay, that's a good question. Okay, it's like the head scratchers here. Um, editing is a very powerful thing. Um, you know, listen, when I did Bad Boys, um, I was doing a technique where I was cutting faster. And my editor, my crew was saying, That's, it's too fast, you can't cut like that, you can't cut. I said, well, just watch it. And I'm like, well, the younger generation can, can process things faster. The smaller the screen, the faster you can process, the bigger it gets, you have to slow it down a bit. Bad Boys, if you look at that, it's a very fast cut movie. Um, I got a lot of shit for it, okay, <laughs> by critics. Now you look at action movies today, and they've got that same pace, okay? So they give Paul Greengrass, who I love his movies, but they give him the props, but I was doing this well before he was ever in the career. <laughs> I agree. Uh, but in editing, it was a very interesting process when I did 13 Hours. And it's a movie that was a true story. We had the people, the people died there, and I had the people that were there, uh, uh, that were there on, the, on, on station there. Uh, they were on the set, and it was weird to do that movie because I've done a lot of popcorn movies, and it's like you do the scene, like, ba 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 boom, bam, that's the end of the tag of the scene. 
And 13 hours was not that way. It was, it was like, it's, it was very kind of serious and it had to be plotting and it had to have tension. And I'm thinking, ah, oh, this is boring. It's not gonna work, it's not gonna work. And when I started cutting it together, and, and Pietro, uh, the editor, Ridley Scott's editor, um, he started cutting it together. I'm like, wow, this is tense. This is like, it, 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 it's actually fun to do something real uh, that has tension. Um, and the tension is made through the edit. Uh, this took a lot of editing. Uh, Pietro cut this as well. Uh, Pietro's Italian, he's very tough. No, Michael, no, you don't need this. No, no, don't, no. And, okay, we could go for, uh, you want some prosciutto? We could, all right, come over, let's have some prosciutto. <laughs> um, but I said, Pietro, we need some funny. No, no. I said, Pietro, we, we need to balance it. So I would cut a little, I, I have my edit bay in Miami, in my house, and it links to my office in Santa Monica, so it's kind of like a, it's a very collaborative uh, thing. It's been like that for 15 years, and I don't know if it even answered the question. I, I, I have a fun, I just want to interject, and I have so, so many questions, but I want to share a he fun. You keep saying that, right? You know, but I'm just, <laughs> I, I hope you guys don't have to go to the bathroom. This right. will be a long session. Th this, uh, I did an editing room visit, and I forget if it was on one of the Transformers. I don't know which, what it was, but I visited him in the editing room with a few other reporters, and it was one of the greatest edit visits of my life because Michael basically kicked out the editor took control of the Avid and played it so loud that there was paint coming off the ceiling true. and hitting us. It was amazing because no one does this. Like I've done other edit yeah, things yeah. and no one does this. Yeah. It was great. Yeah. Um, real question. Uh, have you, is, has there been a project that you came really close to the starting line and ended up not making? Like it fell apart for a reason or you know, like how, were all the projects that you've sort of gotten involved with have they all come to fruition? No, but I'm forgetting. I mean, listen, I'm old. I'm actually 32. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, uh, normally, the movies are not necessarily scripts I've been given. They're scripts that I develop. Like, I'll, I'll write my own action. I never try to take any writer credit. I like working with writers. I add funny. I improv with actors. I, I, I'm, I'm spacing on your question. I don't know. Sure. I can, I can, I can call you all guys later, and we emails and we can, I can tell you the answer, right? You have some, in, in all your movies, you have amazing shots. When you think back on all the, the, the shots you've done, is there one or two that really stand out as, I can't believe we did this and I still don't know how, how we did this? Um, these are stumpers. Oh, that's my phone, sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a shot in Pearl Harbor uh, where it, it's the most complicated explosion ever done to film. It has 350 effects, uh, 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 bombs that are going off, dynamite in the water, seven gigantic old battleships um, at Pearl Harbor. We have 20 planes in the air that are antique planes flying in circles. We have the puffy clouds where you have to shoot in between the sun. Uh, you have a uh, couple lifeboats with, with real stunt people in there. You have to shut a freeway that is three, three and a half miles away. Um, all this has to be coordinated. And you have 12 cameras. And if the lifeboats go by the dynamite, they can get killed. And so there's a lot going on. It took three and a half months to have them rig this, uh, this explosion multiple 350 events in seven seconds. So that was probably the toughest shot of my life. Uh, it went, uh, you can see on the making of, and I kept it in there, where I go ballistic. Because what I'm trying to show is the safety that it takes. And the, and the, the safety stops with me. And they were crossing what we call the line of death. And I just, I start yelling at this lifeboat with my megaphone, full voice, because there is real dynamite in the water and they could die. Um, so I left that in the making of, but the shot was very successful. We did set an eyelid on fire, but we put it out. Um, uh, but there, there you go. You used on this, uh, you're a big fan of red cameras. And I'm curious, can you talk about some of the cameras, like your progression of cameras that you've enjoyed using, starting with Bad Boys? Is there like, a, can you sort of talk about how you picked your favorites and the ones you wanted to use? So I'm a big film guy. I like, I like shooting film. 
I like Nolan, like shooting film. Um, but there, the thing when you went digital, the, 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 the labs are dying, and there are very few labs. And look at the guys nodding. Okay, the guy with the big, uh, big gulp, you're tired now? Are you tired? Do you have to go to the bathroom? <laughs> yeah, you. Ooh, you. Okay, good. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Okay. Um, so, um, big film guy, but the problem is Panavision doesn't, uh, th those, are, those are cameras, but they don't develop them enough. They're so unergonomic, okay? And they're, they're ugly looking and they just, they're just don't fit your body and they, uh, you know, I, I, I did film and then let, like we, w w uh, Aerie creates the uh, 235, which is a handheld. They came, they, they had their engineers come to one of my sets because uh, I knew that I wanted a small camera. That was a very small camera, and I had them develop these handles on the side. It's the first time they've ever had double handles, like handlebars. Um, and it's small enough that you can maneuver and run with it. Um, uh, then, you know, you have red coming into the situation, and I'm thinking, oh, digital sucks, and um, but it's gotten better, and it's gotten smaller, and, you know, 13 hours, I did with uh, Dion Beebe, the D director of photography, who's won the Oscar for uh, Memoirs of the Geisha. Um, great guy to work with. He literally has the best hair you've ever had. Yeah, I mean, I'm like, I've, I'm dirty after a shoot because I'm, I'm the type of guy spreading the blood. I'm, I'm like holding camera. And he is always just calm and perfectly, not a, not a dust thing on him. <laughs> um, but what digital gives you is it gives you uh, it's smaller, it's more sensitive to light, so it's less light at night, so it's cheaper. Um, film takes a lot more you know, firepower, and it's a lot more expensive if you're doing night. So 13 hours was shooting during night blue. Do you guys care about stuff like this? I, I care about this stuff. Do they? <laughs> so like night, night blue, okay, 13 hours. So night blue, what I call, it's right when the sun drops. We're shooting in Malta. Right when it goes over the horizon, you've got the, the sky that goes, it starts to go cobalt. And you have, it was during summertime, so you have about like 18 minutes, okay? So I've got an, Eng an English crew that I've never worked with. Uh, they're getting to know me, and we do night blue for the first two nights, or you know, it's, just, it's, it's literally 18 minutes. And I'm like, okay, we're gonna do five shots. And mind you, I'm a very, very fast shooter, and I'll explain how we shot this thing. Um, uh, so we got two shots. I'm like, okay, that sucks. Uh, we're going to get better because uh, there's too much stuff around. The problem in crews and movie sets, when there's too much shit, you're going to see your shit. Does it make sense? All right. Because we're shooting at a, at a compound and we want to hide it all. So by the end of the, the shooting period, we got so good as a crew, and it was a, it's like a slow build, that guy's filming. I hope I'm good, all right? That guy in the red, right? Is a good shot? You got a good shot? Great. Okay. Um, I'm going to check it later, all right, when you walk outside. By, by the okay. way, he, he really might check it later. I will. And if, I will. <laughs> being very sincere. <laughs> all right. So by the end of our, our, our period working together as a crew, we were so well oiled because I literally had, we would we'd get to the set at 3 o'clock. I'd walk everyone through. I said, at 8.02, we are on rooftop A. At 8.03, we do rooftop B shot at 8.06.7, whatever. Everything was to the minute. We would end up in 18 minutes getting 22 shots. I mean, it was insane. And it was like, and they got so good at it. Um, when you watch that movie, because you get that beautiful, like, kind of cobalt thing in the sky. It was pretty neat. But... That's only capable for, with digital cameras. And I, Red sort of sponsors me, or they do sponsor me. They sponsor me, Fincher, and they, they, let, they let me design uh, uh, a camera. They call it Bayhem or whatever. Uh, uh, it's, 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 it, they spent about $800,000 developing it. It's a handheld camera, ergonomic, and it's so small. Um, and uh, Is this the Komodo camera? Well, no, a Komodo one? is a new thing. That's a new thing. And they, this is funny, they, they, go, they go, what do you want to paint it? You want to paint it black, you want to paint it red? And I'm like, uh, Jared, who owns a company, um, I said, uh, 
I said, well, if you're giving me a free camera for $800,000, and it's like an advertising thing. They weren't ever selling it, but I said, well, let's just paint it fuck you green, okay? <laughs> Nike green. <laughs> and it's become, that's, uh, they paint the, that, that Nike green, which is like that tape, that nice neon tape right there. That's kind of what they, uh, uh, so they did that for me. And, uh, you know, we keep developing the sensors, and it gets better, and uh, there you go. I want to jump backwards for a second yeah. because uh, I love The Rock and I loved your work. You, you, basically, I'd never directed The Rock. That was no. I want oh, no. Kidding. I was going to be like, <laughs> dude, you. Uh, I want to know what you can share about uh, Sean. Sean. Okay. Okay. Let me explain the very first uh, uh, day working with Sean Connery. All right. I'm still a kid. Sean's done 75 movies. I've done. This is my second. <laughs> <laughs> and we're doing the interrogation scene with his long gray hair and the beard. And I was so scared to give him his first direction. So we do one take. OK, all right, let's do it again. Second take. And I'm like, oh my god, i got to give him some direction right now. <laughs> um, Sean, can you um, uh, just say that less charming? He goes, sure, boy, sure, boy. <laughs> so my name on the set was Boy, OK? And He's a director eater. He hates directors. For some reason, I remember I was like down on my knees, and effects were not that good during The Rock uh, at that time. And I used to be, I wanted to be a magician. I really didn't make that much money. I knew I would never be David Copperfield, but I did magic for birthdays when I was a kid. Okay. Um, but I had a big quarter, like a, like a large size quarter, and I put a, a wire in it. Uh, like a steel bar, and I would spin it towards the camera, so it looks like there's a scene where he has he takes a quarter, it flips on the table, and that's the thing that he gets out of his handcuffs. He kind of hits his chair and he dents it, and he gets out of his handcuffs. So I was spinning this quarter. I'm down there. I'm doing it myself, and it, Sh Sean Connery's looking at me, and he's got this wry smile. He was a tough love guy, but he liked me, and I he, I learned so much from that guy, and. Um, he really, really taught me a lot, and he was a true, true movie star and a consummate uh, worker, and just his work ethic. And uh, um, I, I, I was very sad when he passed away. So I put the rock line in this movie because of that. I was going to say because you don't, oh, you don't reference your other stuff in other movies like no. that. Wait, I mean, I did that because a lot of like the younger generation they can quote my movies better than I know them. <laughs> uh, I love Armageddon. Um, and I, I just want to get a little, people, you guys have seen Armageddon. I, we expected, I was like, I expected something on Armageddon. Um, and obviously, uh, I, I would like to know what it was like working with Bruce, because that, that's just such an awesome film, and his performance is great. So the, the truth of this, um, I mean, let's go through some of, some of the cast. Billy Bob Thornton just got his Oscar. I had Ben Affleck, uh, Liv Tyler, Owen Wilson, um, uh, Steve Buscemi, uh, uh, Peter Stormare, come on, we keep going. Um, Michael Duncan, what? Michael oh my God, I you can't believe. I'm going to tell you how I found that guy. Okay, um, uh, and uh, Will, what is the last name? Fichtner. No, F Fickner, and then Patton. Great. Okay, great. And then Michael Clark Duncan, like literally, our, uh, my casting woman was Bonnie Timmerman, New York, and the character's name was Bear, and. Michael, I found you a beautiful guy. He's like 155 pounds. And I'm like, Bonnie, she's, Bonnie's like this tall. I'm like, Bonnie, it says bear. It says bear. And I, but Michael, he's beautiful. I'm like, true story. And so I, I hire my, uh, this woman who did commercials and videos with me. And she found this guy at a gym, all right? He had never done anything. He came in to the casting session. And he's huge, okay? And um, I know we're sidetracking right now, but uh, he's there at the casting, and Bruck, Jerry Bruckheimer uh, and, and me are sitting there, and he's like, he starts crying. Goes, oh my God, my mama is just like, she would be so proud that I'm here talking. I love your movies. And it's like, just calm down, like, like, let's, let's try it. And the guy was great. Okay, cut to first day working with him. Uh, <laughs> With Ben, ben Affleck, like, we're in the uh, what do you call it, the armadillo, okay? And what 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 I loved about Duncan, Mike Duncan, Mike Clark Duncan was 
the charm and just being real. And he was a lovable guy. And I like working with real people and turning them into actors. And he just, he had this voice and he was just, it was like a bad B or C actor. And I'm like, dude, and Ben's like, uh-oh, Mike, what are we doing? It was first take, second take. I'm like, oh my God, we're in trouble. And I'm like, Mike, I want you to just be you. Pretend it's just you talking. And he became the most studied actor in terms of, he came, the, he came literally the farthest because he watched Bruce. He watched everyone. Everyone sort of took him under his wing. And uh, then the next movie he did, Green Mile, right? We, we was up for an Oscar. I mean, and, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I remember telling him in the psychology exam, uh, I do that with all my actors. I give them a psychology exam. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. In the psychology exam in the movie, uh, I said, I want you to cry. He said, Mike, I can't do that. I said, Mike, you can't. They will love you. No, I can't. And he just started crying. And it's like, he's great. Uh, I was very sad when he passed. And, and then Bruce Willis. Bruce, it was a fun, fun cast. Uh, it was almost like, I felt like a camp counselor because everyone was joking around the entire time. But Bruce came in a month after we were shooting and um, uh, he was tough. He was tough. He wanted to, I, what I realized psychology, about, it, actors, it's always psychology. And he just wanted to feel like top dog. Because everyone was there for a month, everyone was sort of friends, and then Bruce comes in, and he wanted to kind of assert himself. And I'm a young, it's my third movie, and um, I'm young, and I, I, was, I was about 17 at that time, because I'm 32 now. <laughs> um, uh, there's, there's a reason why I keep saying 32, all right, and let me just, I'll get that out of the way. The great Howard Stringer, who ran Sony, uh, he was knighted by the Queen, and he, I said, how old are you, Howard? And he goes, Michael, Michael, we're all 32. I'm like, that's a great philosophy, all right? So there we go. Um, so uh, Bruce was tough, and the, the picture slowed down to just a stall. Like, it was like, we were shooting at a clip, and then just, because he wanted to assert himself. Got to Jerry Bruckheimer, my producer, who was fantastic. He said, show him. Just show him some, some footage. So three weeks, four weeks in, I showed him some footage. And Bruce goes, oh, man, I would have been a lot nicer if you showed me earlier. Because <laughs> actors just need to trust their directors. And uh, I loved working with Bruce. Uh, he was a real, he, was, he is and was a real movie star. Um, you know, I was inspired by, um, um, I'm spacing on the name because I've been talking for nine hours today. Um, um, Come on, uh, the building, come on. What is it? Die, Hard. Die Hard. Okay, there we go. One of the great, are going to be like Nakatomi Plaza? What? One of the great action movies, Die Hard. Um, Bruce Willis uh, was funny. He, he, he has a great power of the, he just holds the camera's attention. And uh, uh, I really liked working with him, really did.